coming out of the Open Championship. We're all talking about wind. We want to teach you something that's really important. It's time for Proving It, presented by Titleist. So many of us are so confused about what do we do when the wind is blowing crosswind. And congratulations to Shane Lowry as he negotiated those winds very, very well. What a fantastic round he played on that Saturday, 63. But what I want to do is I want to explain to you how you play these winds and what's really important as we hit these shots. Now look, this is going to be a little bit of a longer segment. I know there are many of you that are going to want to go skip it. You can't do this. You got to fight through this because this is going to help you lower your scores. Now, I also want to introduce you to a couple of people that the last time you met, we were making a hole in one. Well, a couple months have passed. They're still here. Greg Ducharme back there and my, boy, my man, the Gibbers. Yeah, Steve Gibbs back there. So, they're important in this, this whole thing because we're going to go through some varying winds. We're going to go through some varying apexes to get you to understand exactly what's going on here. So I got a new glove just for the occasion. Now, here's what I want you to pay attention to. And so many people are confused about how do I go about playing hook winds, fade winds? What's more important? How do I deal with this? I want to explain this to you. We're going to prove it to you with all these numbers so that when you start to see this, you're going to start to understand and visualize exactly how this happens. Now, what I have is I have a six iron here. I've got wind coming into my chest, so it's going crosswind from my right to the left. I'm going to hit a shot here, and we're going to go through this wind, how this wind affects the golf ball. Okay, so just a standard six iron and as we hit this, I'm not going to try to create a tremendous amount of spin either way. So hopefully, I'll hit a fairly straight shot. Now, there's my shot there. Let's look at what, what information we have in there. So the information that we have is, I apex that at about 90 feet. That's typically what I get. I started a little bit to the right and I had a little bit of side spin. That side spin was about, let's just call it 300 RPMs to the right. And that golf ball that you can see started at the flag or started at our target and then moved off to the left hand side because of that win. Now, what you're going to notice is as we start to change this stuff, changing apex, changing clubs, changing spin rates, watch what happens to this shot because this is really fascinating. Again, our baseline is at about 90 feet. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to create the exact same shot. I'm going to try to create a relatively straight shot, maybe even create some, some side spin to the right. And we're also going to, going to lower that trajectory. How much did that ball curve? 12 yards. Cur so 12 yards. I got 12 yards of, of left of hook, of, uh, hook shot on 300 RPMs of right spin. So that ball should have started right and then faded to the right. In fact, it drew 12 yards. Now, same exact thing, six iron, same club. This time what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna try to flight this a little bit lower. So I'm standing a little bit closer, club face is a little bit open. This is my shot this time. Now, what you're gonna see on this is, I started that only a, a tenth of it, I basically straight. It had 38 RPMs of left spin, so basically that was straight. I flighted this down, so now it's at 71 feet, and look at how much that ball curved off. How much did that move, Greg? 20 yards. So 20 yards, just 38 RPMs of left spin on a lower trajectory shot, and the ball moved 30 yards. So now, what you realize is, if I get just a little bit of left spin, that ball, no matter what the apex is, it's going to go violently to the left. So I've, you, one of the things that you have to do when you have this side spin coming out, coming to your chest, you have to create cut spin or else this thing is going violently to the hook side. So what I want to do now is I want to create a violent amount of, of side spin here. I'm going to flight this thing down a little bit lower, see if I can get this thing under 70 feet. So I'm going to stand even more on top of it and I'm going to really abbreviate this follow through. Okay, now that was an excellent shot. 
Cut that open a little bit more. Now, here's what I want to tell you about this. Before we go through this, here's what I want you to understand. As you start opening up that club face a little bit more, your launch angle is going to go up on that. And when the launch angle starts to go up, what ends up happening is your apex can go up. And as your apex starts to go up, now all of a sudden, the ball's in the air a little bit longer and it can curve a little bit more. You can see that shot, while a little bit higher than the green one, is a relatively straight shot. How much did that one? Four yards. That moved four yards. Let's go look at the numbers over here. And what I want you to see is, remember before, I had 300 RPMs uh, of, of right spin. That golf ball, at that point, it moved about, what did it move? 12 yards, right? The first so, one, 12 yards. Yeah, so I got 12 yards of curve on 300 RPMs of right spin, and it started relatively straight. It was 0.1 to the right. This one, I started 0.16 to the right, so it started more of the right because my club face was a little bit open, and because my club face was a little bit more open, my apex jumped to 83 feet. Now, my apex on the other one was 71 feet. It had a little bit of hook spin to it. Boom, it's way, way, way left. Now, all of a sudden, I've got that club face a little bit more open, increase the spin rate. The launch angle is at 16.2, and that ball curved how much? Four yards. Four yards. So, what does that all mean? That means that there's a marriage between the curve or the, the fade that we put into this and also the apex of the shot. What does that mean? Well, I lost a lot of yardage. That's what happened. So, while I was fighting that, I lost some distance. So, I'm going back and I'm going to grab the five iron this time. Now, what I'm going to do is I got to flight this thing a little bit lower because what you're finding, what you're understanding is as much as I basically sliced that ball, it didn't slice. What does that mean? Well, now all of a sudden what, what that means is, is that, and you can see that red one there. Let's pull that red one up, Gibbers. And what you can see is, is that on the red one, I started it to the right of the basket. It moved over to the center of the basket. It just didn't have enough distance. And because I was making an abbreviated swing and cutting across it so much and abbreviating that follow through, what I got was I, I, I lost ball speed. And as a result of losing ball speed, I lost distance. So going to go get a little bit more club, get a five iron. I don't have to open this up quite as much. And I should be able to flight this even lower than that 83. Let's see what we get again. Creeping in here close, club face is a little open. And now we're going to shut this thing off, this follow through and slice it. So there you go. So now I flighted that one a little bit better. That one there, so I got that thing to get out to 166. I brought my trajectory down, I brought my apex down by a little bit, and I started that thing to the right. I still put 222 RPMs of right spin on this. Listen to this number from Greg. How much did that curve? 10 yards. Another 10 yards. So what did you learn? Man, you gotta cut this thing a lot in order for you to take some hook spin out. That's up to 222 RPMs, which is nice, but it's not as much as the 600. You gotta get violent with this shot. We're getting violent here. See, see how much you have to, now when we get to the hook spin, you're gonna learn something that's fascinating. All right, here we go. So now I'm gonna cut this even more. I'm gonna get this up to about, Let's see if I can get this up to 600. Let's see what we get. So now I really, I really sliced that up. That's why that, that trajectory is going to go up into the air. How much did that one, how much did that one move? 10 yards again. 10 yards again. Why 10 yards? Well, let's come up here because we got to pay attention to this one number. See, I, I got my spin rate up, right? I got that to 715 RPMs to the right. So the spin rate went up, but it, 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 it hooked way, way more. In other words, I sliced it even more. I started at three and a half degrees to the right and sliced it with 700 RPMs of right spin. But what happened? Apex, 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 84 feet on that apex. What does that mean? The ball's in the air for a longer period of time. And when that ball's in the air for a longer period of time, it has more chance for that wind to wipe that spin off. And the next thing you know, I got what, 10 yards? 10 yards. 10 yards. Now, what does that all mean? That means that when you start hitting fade shots into hook, into hook winds, you got to go way, way, way down in your loft. In other words, in order for me to be able to do this, I've got to go to fours and threes. You're almost going to go to, and this is about 15 miles an hour of wind that's going across from right to left. I've got to take a four iron and I've got to cut it in half and make sure that that thing stays way down so that I don't get as much curve. Now, here's what I want to do, Greg. I want to turn on the, the hook. The, the, I want to get a wind coming over my back and I'm going to hook it. Now, I'm going to go back. 
grab my six iron while he's doing all that. And now what we're going to do is we're going to start to compare some of these numbers because this is fascinating. So my highest spin on that was 715 RPMs. That was with the five iron. I can get that thing over 1,000 when I get into the threes and the fours, and we may have a chance to get to that in a bit. But now what I'm going to do is I'm going to start hitting some hook shots. And I've got a wind now, again, the same exact uh, uh, velocity. In effect, it's going about 15 miles an hour, but it's coming off my back. What I'm going to do this time is I'm going to hook this ball into the wind. I'm not going to try to alter the apex. I'm going to try to get this thing at my standard apex about 90 feet. Now, as I hook it and I shut that club face, that may come down just a little bit, but I do have a six iron, so let's see what we can get here. And this time what I'm going to do is I am going to hit a hook. Watch how much, how much different this is. So there's my hook. Now look at that thing fight the wind. One of the things that you're going to notice when we do that is I get a lot more distance. Now, really interesting stuff that we go on here, and I'm going to get that number in just a second. My apex there was 80 feet, so I lost 10 feet by taking that club face and shutting it in there. I side spinned it 700 RPMs to the left, which is roughly what I had when I had that five iron and I was cutting it in there. So we've got a, a, a very comparable thing going on right now. What, how much did that move? One yard. That moved one yard. Say it again for me. One yard. One yard. That moved one yard. One yard. What does that mean? The hook spin tends to fight that, that wind a lot greater than the cut spin does. And as a result, I can now aim that shot more or less at my target. I started that one two degrees to the right. I hooked it 700 RPMs to the left. I apexed it at 80 feet which is basically the same. The distance, all of a sudden it went from 159, it went up to 187 yards because what happened was it was spinning into the wind and the wind, it's now moving the ball in a forward direction. It's very, very peculiar how that works. So what does that mean? What that means is, is that when I've got a crosswind that's coming off my back, I'm actually gonna take less club I'm gonna to go to seven irons. I can hook it into that wind and I can play straight. So now I go back, I'm gonna go and get a, let's just see if I can get an eight iron to that target. I know, it's a stretch, I'm with you. But as I start getting more loft, I can start to get a little bit more side spin, that hook spin. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna play this back a little bit. I'm gonna get a little bit of eight iron hook spin on this and I'm gonna aim this one straight. This is gonna be fun to see what I can get out of this. So there's my eight iron, there's my hook spin. Did I get the distance that I wanted to? No, but I got it right at my target. Now, come on over here, because this is gonna be fun. Remember I was telling you before about elevating the spin rate on that one. I got that one to 1,700 RPMs of hook spin. That ball started to the left about a half a degree. That's French for straight. My apex, 76 feet again, so I'm right around that number, 80 feet. How much did that move? One yard. One yard. Did it move one yard on a hook? One yard hook. One yard on a hook. So I was able to hook it into that, into that crosswind coming off my back with the eight iron and it went 166 yards. So what I got was I got a two club difference because remember that six iron that I hit that I cut into only went 159. This goes 166. When you start playing in that crosswind and you're hooking it into it, you take less club, tow that thing down and hook it. And I mean, hook it, and all you do is aim straight. However, we go back to the cut now because I've elevated this spin rate up so much. Now what I gotta do is I gotta now go back to, so now what we're gonna do with a four iron, and Greg, if you would be so kind as to give me a little bit of crosswind going from my right to left or coming into my chest, and as he's doing that, here's what I need you to understand. We're talking about trying to hit a ball that's gonna go about 170 yards. That's really what we're trying to do. You wanna think about a couple of different things. First of all, hook spins and cut spins are gonna react differently with hook winds and fade winds. And it's violent, I mean, it's dramatic. When you have that wind that's a uh, fade wind, you're gonna hook it into that fade wind. You get less club and aim straight and hook it violently you don't have to worry about flighting it down because as you tow the club in, when that uh, club gets towed in, it's gonna launch it out a little bit lower. When you start taking a club that has loft and you start adding loft, your apex starts to go up, your launch angle starts to go up, your spin rate can go up, 
But, be, and I, don't, I can't tell you that I have this whole thing figured out just yet. All I know is, is that I want you to understand that as we do this and you start hitting this cut spin, now all of a sudden, it's still gonna have draw. Four iron coming at you right here. I'm gonna open up that club face pretty significantly, so I'm right over here. I'm gonna put some major cut on this. I don't think I can get it to 1,700, but I should be able to get it above 1,000. And getting it above 1,000, you're gonna see it's still gonna hook. This is still gonna hook, so here we go. So there's my four iron. I sliced this thing in half. I got that thing to go 170. Look at my, look at this now. Remember what I was telling you before about apexes? We get into the apex space and as the ball is in the air for a longer period of time, now it's gonna tend to get moved. That apexed at 98 feet. That was my highest apex that I had. It still only went 170 yards, which is basically the same as the eight iron. I hit the eight iron 166, four yard difference. That's the same. Spin rate up to 15, well, 1452. I was gonna round up, but let's be genuine with that. Okay, now, drum roll please. How much did that move? Three yards. Three yards in the, the hook left. side. So I got three yards of hook in that. I had 1400 RPMs of right spin. I started it to the left, just a fraction, basically 0.2, which is straight. So I started to the straight side. I fade it or slice it into the, into the world. Now. I got three yards of, of, of draw spin. Now what I want to do is I want to turn all the wind off. I'm going to try to do the same thing. I'm going to try to get 1400 RPMs of fade spin on this. And then I promise you, I'll give you your time back because I know that you've stuck with me and you've watched this. This is valuable stuff for you as you go out to go play. And stuff I can promise you, I've done a lot of these. In all the videos that I've done, I've never done this. I've never gotten into this depth and what goes on with crosswinds, and it's so pertinent coming out of the open. So here we go. We've got no wind whatsoever. I'm gonna create 1,400 RPMs of side spin. At least I'm gonna try to do that, all right? And watch how much this thing curves. We'll get the reading of, from Greg of how much this thing moved. So here we go. I'm gonna aim it straight. 1,400 RPMs of side spin now coming. So here's 1,400 RPMs. You know what? That was pretty good. I want you to come over here. I'm not, this, is, this is honest truth. There's no magic in television. Remember I was 1,452? This one's 1,492. Remember I started that 0 0.2 to the left? This is 0.3 to the left. So these are very, very, very comparable numbers. So remember, let's go through our numbers. I was 170. That one went 186. Remember club face getting open? A lot of side spin on that. Now. Launch angle, 16, apex, 87 feet. All these are very comparable. How much did that thing fade? 18 yards. 18 yards, so I got 18 yards of fade. So what does that mean? What that means is the following. I get so fired up about all this stuff and I hope you all are understanding how cool this is. So here's what I need you to understand. When you take this thing and you open up, you're basically gonna create 20 yards of slice. That's what you just did. That's what I did with my forearm. I created 20 yards of slice and the ball curved three yards to the left. I lost a lot of distance. 20 yards of slice with 15 miles an hour of wind coming off into my chest is gonna move the ball three yards to the left. The same thing cannot be said when you get into the hook. The same thing cannot be said. I'm gonna play, I'm gonna play a much straighter shot with a much more lofted club because that thing is going to hook in there and fight it. It's going to go straight. When you're doing this fade thing, you got to go nuts with this to get this golf ball to fly the way you want it to fly. All right. So what I'm hoping you really uh, got out of this whole thing is hook wins and fade wins are completely different. They require different clubs. They require different swings. They require different everythings. And you've got to be able to control both the spin and the apex.
If you want to play great golf in the crosswinds, you've got to control spin and apex. And as you start adding loft to clubs, you start getting higher apex. It's very obvious. That's what you have to figure out now. How can I get my apex down, get my spin rate up so that I can get that ball to fight that wind a little bit more? It's easier to do with a hook spin than it is to do with a cut spin. I hope you enjoy that. That's Proven It, presented by Titleist.